Welcome to Liberty RBA Account, and this is where we find, uh, I guess, anarchist news perspectives on anything and everything, <laughs> and including news stories, topics, or social issues, or things that are on our mind. Uh, today is the first snow shower of Richmond, which is uh, a difference from uh, <laughs> snow flurries, because I was trying to figure out, well, do, does uh, snow flurries actually count as the first fall of snow in Richmond? But, you know, they don't really accumulate enough, you know, it's kind of like dandruff, you know, is that, we really call that snow. Uh, <laughs> but apparently there's a distinction between the two, between a snow flurries and a snowfall, and today was actually the first snowfall of Richmond of the year. So that I will look at as authentic and uh, the first uh, event of the year there. We won't have another inch warm flag. All right. <laughs> uh, so given that, uh, I guess we could talk about a segue into global warming, aka the weather, right? Uh, does anyone remember Wizard of 96? Oh, I remember Wizard of 96. Right. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Wizard of 96? I don't know. I think I was indoors. The wizard was three feet tall where I was. Yeah. It was mainly an ice storm because I was closer to the water. But yeah, power went out a long fucking time. That was the main thing. It's like, you know, you had your first world rug pulled out from under you. And that was still in cell phones where I was living for very proto, you know, there weren't a lot of mobile devices. So yeah, there was there was a good, you know, two weeks we were cut off for everything. I think pagers were starting to make the scene back then. It was like that was a feature in communication there. You had a pager on you going to school, it was like you're the shit. What? Have a pager on you? Pagers. Who yeah. Had pa I I never knew any kids with a pager. That was like the coolest thing you could have, walking around with a pager. Oh, time uh, I have one, but it didn't connect to anything. It was just pretty cool to have one. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> my dad had one of those. I remember yeah. growing up and my dad had some pager. Like, he, 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 I'm good to pay. I gotta go. I gotta go, son. Like, Mom's <laughs> calling. <laughs> like, I'm dad. I'm essential services. You but your dad was a doctor, right? Or something. No, he was, a, he was just a student. Because okay. uh, first, like, doctors had them. And then it became more blue collar, like if you're a plumber on call or something, you know, it became the, yeah, it was the first tracking device. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Blizzard 96, uh, I was up in Maryland at the time, and yeah, it was like, what, four or five foot, it was a lot of what? snow. It was in a lot up there. I guess there's more snow up in, uh, yeah, the higher you go, right? Northern area than the other southern parts. I don't know how much it reached down here in Richmond. Well, it also matters, like, what bodies of water around you, mm -hmm. like, if you're, more in the Midwest, the you have the lake effect around Indiana, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, and that whole those five great lakes. That may, increases the moisture, and makes the snow fall even more. Over mm -hmm. here, we have the sea. We have a bit of the warm Atlantic current, which doesn't help a bit, but we still have like huge northern currents from Canada. And if you're going to argue in terms of lasting damage, even as far as Richmond, like Hurricane Isabel is more damaging than you know any blizzard could be. Hmm. Yeah. It encapsulates you for a while, but it doesn't actually knock shit out. I remember Newport News, I was, uh, for Hurricane Isabel, like, we lost power for, like, two weeks. And I was in between Fort Eustis and Denby, like, which is, a, the, a lot of people who are living there, there were, like, oh, I feel like 1.8 million people without power for, like, two weeks hmm. during Hurricane Isabel. No PlayStation? No. N64? No. Unless you have a generator, which one of my neighbors did, but he didn't share it. <laughs> That's when you realize the power of 7 Eleven and Waffle Houses. Like, they are ready. Actually, that is one of the indicators that they have, the government has, when you see sort of, uh, the degree in which the natural disaster is uh, very threatening. Or... And which a Waffle House can function. Yeah, right. <laughs> so the Waffle and House still works. Everything's okay. We're good. <laughs> Everyone can have that is what the powers you believe in ultimately defer to. The Waffle House. Right, I'm a private business. Well, they can weather it through the storm. Well, I guess everything should be okay. We should too, because Waffle Houses are everywhere. Um, so once you run out of waffles, <laughs> then you move on to the Twinkies. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, there's been a lot of. Uh, I think the first time I ever heard of global warming was um, biology. I think maybe middle school and National Geographic around eighth grade. It, yeah, yeah middle school. Yeah. yeah, and the first time that's the first time I ever saw the hockey puck uh, algorithm graph trying to show you like in a couple of years it's going to hit the fan and it's going to go way up to the sky, and then the whole world is going to be in a lot of trouble. There's a hole in the ozone layer right now. There's 
the whole place is going to be underwater. Water Road was just coming out around the, mm -hmm. the corner. There was a big kind of hype uh, around this sort of stuff. Uh, and then when it was climate change, it was the day after tomorrow. You know, yeah. popular media's idea of how much danger we're under because they have to make it global, otherwise we won't fucking care about it. Because they'll be like, oh, it's that the people on the other side of that imaginary line's problem. Right. So that was, uh, that's interesting, uh, and the fact in terms of how uh, government will kind of use it more into a, a fear thing for you to kind of conserve resources, uh, don't use much um, in that regards, but I would imagine like uh, businesses allocate for that, allocate for maximum amount of in, way, in ways and terms you can uh, allocate resources and it's uh, the inputs and outputs of people's needs towards that. And our ability to help each other would be so, you know, more readily available if we didn't have to make it an issue of um, like how world hunger becomes exasperated because we have to send aid across borders and people have to be bribed and pandered to and it plays into, you know, what sanctions we've imposed on oh, yeah. the past. Trans <laughs> transporting food, transporting yeah. anything grown up off of the soil to different countries. There's so many things, there's so many regulations that they pass. Right. They don't, they don't want you to import an active kind of seed that's going to have pathogens and spread to native wildlife or whatever. But they're not going to even plant it. You're going to give it to people to eat. I think that's the first time, though, that they try to tell you that businesses are bad. Because they're out of control, creating all this kind of crazy pollution, and that's why you need government to rein in. Otherwise, you're going to have this crazy apocalyptic scenario in which no one's going to survive. And that's why you have to go in this kind of starvation uh, lifestyle to conserve every little thing. Uh, electricity, every little tiny thing. It's simulating a war is what it's doing. It's imposing rationing at a time when we don't necessarily need rationing. Like in 1984, right. <laughs> yeah, that's very true, very it's like, true. It's like I think that the businesses don't realize they live on planet Earth too. It's right. like, what, they just, they're just going to ignore the environment they're around? No. The only, the only company that might not care about the environment because it can go to space is probably SpaceX. But most companies are not SpaceX. California has been dry before, okay? There's, you know, instances in popular literature and film that commemorate the times when California was dry before. And we want to act like it's a reason we have to impose sanctions on people. No, it's something that occurs in this environment. We have to study it better. People are going to live with it in the long run. And then, well, then there's another thing. Remember what Benjamin had talked about? They grow rice in California. So they buy crap tons of water to feed the rice, where literally the other side of the country, the whole D.C. metro area, is a swamp. It was a swamp. It still is a swamp. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we growing rice there? And it's sinking. The whole entire city is slowly sinking. Uh, you have a lot of monument levels and everything that's slowly going yeah, under. Those monuments are so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> the weight of lies on the ego. Lincoln, you sit on a throne of lies. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a marsh. How is it still there in Logan's run? He would have been like up to his neck. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing has aquifers everywhere. Why? It's a bad idea to build there, but it would be great for, for agriculture. It'd be great for source of clean water. Right. Why are we growing stuff in California? Right. Why not? <laughs> it's expensive. Do you want to end up like Mexico City? So uh, two things I want to bring up was uh, the algorithm, the hockey puck thing that we saw in, in middle school. I'm not quite sure what, what time many of others of us did see that. I point. remember the graphic talking about. I remember like the readouts of the um, ozone layer and all that. Which, mm -hmm. Fuck it. There were so many things preceding ground level ozone, you know, like mercury poisoning and other things you could have addressed on a local level. But people were just, they, they always thought they could shove it somewhere else. Y2K was around that time, I think. Yeah. Oh, I mean, gosh. I remember the Y2K insurance commercials. Are you insured for Y2K? <laughs> yeah. Don't turn on me, computer. <laughs> Make sure you know we're the right time. <laughs> yeah, uh, instead of dressing something that it was in, it behooved them to sweep under the rug, they made it, you know, a global crisis. Right. Yeah, instead of, you know, owning up to their personal fucking responsibility. All right. And the hockey puck graph apparently was wrong. That was, uh, they did the wrong algorithm in there, and and they, they just got carried away with that without actually checking the, the numbers, and that's why it went that crazy uh, <laughs> a point to the sky immediately. They realized the killer bees aren't coming. You know? Yeah, so they, they made a mistake, but they got carried away with it for a couple of years and never really wanted to address it now and ignore it. Uh, and it's something I believe that Al Gore even used when he was going to his campaign after uh, uh, losing to uh, Bush 
you know, whenever, uh, when he lost a bush, he grew out a beard, a lot of people do that, you know, in their own kind of disgrace and trying to disappear for a while. And, uh, beard. yeah, they didn't grow a beard. Yeah. Like DiCaprio, hiding behind the beard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Beard and he did this little <laughs> climate change video of this guy who owns a house on the coast of California, a new one back then. You know, so he's not that worried about you know the rising waters of, of erosion and flying around in this jet plane. Doesn't seem like he's too concerned about fuel itself. Um, we can go talk about like solutions for, to this sort of stuff, but I think you were mentioning some stuff you came across some information towards uh, maybe how it doesn't kind of add up. Where's that? Right, so there was one incident. Have any of you heard about Climate Gate? Oh. Yeah, it was exposed that uh, a lot of the early um, cl the temperature data that they were um, using for the graphs that they were showing um, was actually completely fabricated from locations that there weren't actually thermometers set. <laughs> yeah, just complete fabrication. Just Who was taking these readings? Was it like, you know, the National Weather Service? We saw these other organizations. Right, <laughs> with government, with government organizations. Yeah. There. Oh. What is the name of? Right? <laughs> yeah. So. Water gate. Climate gate. Climate gate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It had, if it had something to do with water, it would be a, what, a, a water gate gate, right? It's in the Mitchell and Webb kind of skit they were talking about. Um, yeah, that's not to be surprised by that. Um, the Corbett Report recently put out a video, um, it's a $100,000 global warming challenge that if you can validate like the statistical methods they were using to put out it's some of their most recent... Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find out how they put this graph together. <laughs> and it's valid. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they just put their finger out there. <laughs> the winds are blowing from that direction. So, okay, yeah. obviously, yeah. One argument I've seen, um, someone I follow is name on YouTube is Suspicious Observers, um, Ben Davidson. He watches the sun and he talks about how solar activity is largely responsible for a lot of these climate trends. Well, that's true. All the energy we have on the surface. Exactly. It's intuitive, right? So it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so much yeah, more responsible. The talk of Aurora Borealis is mm -hmm. like being seen further south. I mean, is the does that tie into it, or is that just something that, hmm, you that might be a result in, like, of the northwestern states, the weakening yeah. magnetic field or something? Well, like that. that's also because we're closer. Like, we're not completely in the lip. We're not uh, a complete elliptical orbit. We we are closer and further away from the sun. Because we're a flat Earth. <laughs> we're, we we get closer and further away from the sun every, a little bit every every like cycle of eighteen or twenty years. Which is also, I think, what powers El Niño and La Niña. Mm. Well, well this kind of temperature and fluxes happen all throughout like the history of the world. Like we just haven't been alive to see it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the... And I mean, like honestly, if it's happening, it's gonna happen. Like I don't think there's anything that like we can necessarily do. And if we do, if we are playing a part in which we're destroying the earth, we're not actually destroying the earth. We're just ruining the climate in which we would be able to live. So the earth would still continue. Like, Right. Life will find a way. Self interest <laughs> will kick in. The Earth is the most difficult uh, weather of all the planets in our solar system to predict. All the other one, other planets, they've been the same all the time. Yeah. Uh, here you have hospitable. Right. Here there's a lot of geological activity going on, tectonic change, <coughs> a lot of stuff. So yeah, the weather here unpredictable. It's very difficult to to see where it's going to go. Um, a lot of stuff are changing and, and moving around all the time. Other planets very easy. It hasn't changed. There's not a lot of activity on there. That's Kind of, kind of what you need to help kind of produce life on those planets. Um, and I think trying to go back towards, um, I guess, some of the solutions towards, like, even if it was businesses, right, who are at fault of some of this stuff and creating some of the pollution, uh, then the problem doesn't, those are side effects. Those are uh, the effects of what happens when government doesn't respect private property and allows uh, polluting companies to Every get away Every major disaster that has legitimately affected people health-wise in the U.S. can be traced back to something that was sanctioned. You know, you want to look at the Love Canal up in Niagara Falls or, um, 
uranium and uh, uranium waste from nuclear power plants being put on like you know the Blackfoot Indian Reservation. You know that is the government saying that's okay. Right. That's you know yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our default. Okay, we can sacrifice this shit, and it was all perfectly above board. Somebody else had to be the whistleblower. You know the the quantifiable things that have poisoned and killed people. Right. It was have been legal. What was the um, oh dang it. Never mind. Aaron the movie, yeah, yeah. What was that one about? That, uh, that was based on a real story. Yeah, I'm not too so familiar with much of those. I mean, there's a company that was uh, putting a lot of, I guess, toxins in the in the water system and caused a lot of the people who have birth defects or kind of die early in the area. Uh, just negative stuff. But a lot of these, uh, it was difficult to sue them uh, or find evidence for these sort of things. And that's just the case in a lot of places. It's, sometimes it's easier for them to just pay the fine of their cot because the fine is less than having to pay everybody else out. Or to just take the head and try to change uh, the facility or structures that they need to kind of to be encoded in regulation. And now under government though, since it doesn't respect private property, you will never find a, a way to kind of prevent this sort of stuff or stop it from having or having a way to, a means of um, a counterbalance if someone were to pollute on your property, right? So there's no pollution insurance, yeah, for example. Yeah, if you can pay the legal fees to take them there, you know, you you might be safe and sound. Other than simply, you know, say, oh, okay, we've, we've got a counterpoint to this. It's like, no, okay, you already have the right to do what you're doing to this land. Mm -hmm. And the measure we take against you is sabotage or, you know, trespassing or something else. Right, like but if right. they're having effects on on land that isn't theirs, or li that they're having effects literally on their neighbor's land, there's a concept of, hey, like, you, you're you affecting your neighbors, and they're not going to like that. Right, like yeah. immediate community. Right, now you're you're, uh, you're initiating force on the property, right? Uh, you're ruining it. Right? But you're, you're not dependent it. on those neighbors. You have a backup plan. You have insurance through the government. Right, so if there's insurance, <laughs> that's, yeah, that can Right, they have a limited liability for those corporations, and of course, it's the CEOs who don't get in trouble for that, they don't go to jail, they don't lose anything. Uh, it's a sock puppet count, uh, the same immunity that uh, government grants itself from their own actions. Uh, court system and a free society have real respect, and now you can homestead bodies of water, water like rivers. So of course, since no one's really allowed to own rivers, you know, it's, uh, the only person who's a, who's a victim there will be the government if they so care to prosecute and pursue that. But of course, uh, the water from those rivers affects a lot of other people's lands that are adjacent to that. Uh, yeah, so in a free society, you can appropriate it, you can homestead, you now have boundaries uh, which you can prevent pollution uh, from trespassing your property and there's a lot of technology that can uh, trace pollution particles back to its source and uh, and know who who is committing that we're in this vicinity is causing that and of course if you have a uh, air uh, like pollution insurance in this community and somebody wants to create up a coal you know factory farm uh, polluting agency <laughs> there what ended up happening is that, well, the insurance company is going to obviously buy out the land to prevent that company from setting up shop because if they do, they're going to create pollution. And then which means I have to pay everybody out <laughs> in terms of the agreement and contract every year. And when it comes to coal production in the past, it could have been, I feel, given the, you know, I mean, this is very much a, you know, human interest, folksy view at all. If the company said then had a more vested interest in not shitting where you eat, then nobody would have been allowed to progress as far as they did with you know the willy-nilly production they had. But it's it, it it's incredibly much a Hunger Games parallel that if we don't work it, we can't starve out these companies. They can only starve us out. All right. Uh, yeah, they don't allow them to own the lands that they uh, like they cut right in, in terms of or mine and whatnot. They're renting these lands from the government, so there's no incentive for them to kind of preserve or take the the need extra steps a lot of people do when you actually own something um, to take care of it. And I guess there's also some other other areas in which uh, people forget there are more trees here in the United States than there were decades ago. You know, a lot of these things are kind of stepping its way back towards, uh, uh, I guess, renewing itself. To be fair, in that process, we're planting a lot of <coughs> trees that grow really quickly. Um, what is the word for it? Trees you can grow really quickly. And and Forestation with like lava and pines. Yeah, in Matthews, right, that's big business. There are stands of trees surrounding are. everywhere where they mm -hmm. grow the fast growing pines, and then paper companies come in and replant them. You know, it's, mm. I mean, it works. So, that yeah. and soybeans is what is keeping my hometown afloat right now. 
Yeah. Here, soybeans are not really that great for the environment. No, they're, they're not. You yeah. have to you buffer those with like the trees, and then in the inland areas, you're you're growing the high crop um, protein and um, sugar crops, corn and soybeans. Mm -hmm. But there are places that will mulberry, lavender, and pine, and a few others. Um, it's like big tall things that grow quickly and they they're indigenous you know lamale pine is like virginianus that is a native plant form that grows along the shoreline i can recall <coughs> like the grass historic grass is sort of like trees that's like organic populations just moving slowly across the the continent as a group uh as a species and just kind of just moving around i guess where the wind takes them well you don't have to be entirely dependent on wind like in in Animals. my county because they take an active interest in like hedging out Phragmites and bamboo and planting lava lilies there because those are invasive plant species that will cause erosion. But people, if they're aware of this, they do it of their own accord because it's their own land. Mm. You know, they don't want that land to go away. They plant that shit and it's easy and it's quick and as long as you're not, as long as you're educated rather than, you know, incited. You can make the right idea. You make the right decision for the land that you own. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Even supposedly poor, trashing, seeming people have made this decision for their own land. Right. And I, I take a lot of comfort in that. There's also uh, a lot of ice up in the uh, northern region of the pole. And people, ships are getting stuck up there now. You know this whole thing about. Oh yeah, there's more ice on the on the Arctic Shelf now. Right. And it's apparently it's supposed to be less. Right, yeah. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of propaganda out there, a lot of stuff that you're always just trying to target businesses as being the boogeyman and not government creating these conditions to, to begin with. And everyone will look at the culprit. There's always going to be uh, scapegoats and finger pointing and uh, fingers on the dam and so band-aid solutions. Uh, there's also more polar bears uh, alive now than there were uh, decades ago. Uh, so, I mean, so even if there is a problem, even if there is, there's other areas that I would seem to require a lot more investigation, like the solar players. Yeah, so, yeah but uh, in, the, in this process of uh, all these new forests, we've destroyed old growth forests, which has resulted in mass extinction. But a lot of a lot of the destruction of old growth forests is because of urban expansion in cities and in urban places where poor companies, poor governments are incompetent at managing their societies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has happened because of, ur of this urban sprawl in places that don't have, where, where they don't have education for the kind of development they're doing. And it's people who are buying illegal permits from that government who are destroying, doing a lot of illegal development. That happens in and India and in Southeast Asia and in Mexico, in Latin America, mm -hmm. all the time. People are like, this is supposed to be an ecological area, but if you just pay this guy a couple hundred more pesos, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, just destroy that tree wheel with those monkeys are. Oh, hey, you see the brightly colored frogs? They're poisonous. They're endangered. They'll kill you. But, you know, the, and by the that farmer token, I've care. heard the polar bear argument, but I've also heard it's more that you see more polar bears because they're being encroached on. You know, oh. people have to find a place to live. So, and, I mean, they make the same argument with narwhals. Like, okay, we have to live, learn to live in the areas that these creatures exist. Like, and it's, Mm -hmm. I have I had this idea. It's like, well, instead of like not allowing people to develop like into these lands, what if you make a business out of selling endangered species biomes? What if you made like little biomes people could have in their houses with endangered species in it? Or just treat them like raccoons, you know? Be like, this is the <laughs> cost you pay for living in this area. You know, I mean, this thing is gonna come and eat your trash occasionally. It you would know? be so. Illegal. There's so many things we've learned to live in harmony with. You know, I mean, other societies that they aren't so clinchedly first world coexist with animals much easier. Right. Well, so you're pointing out already the government's uh, the common denominator already, you know, passing out these uh, permits, you know, licenses to kind of cut down areas in which they claim to be government land that they're supposed to be caretakers of, in which they have never done, uh, so to speak, in terms of like nearly eliminating the American bison here out of existence because of that. Uh, private vegetation of these lands uh, saved all of that, saved the bison, which is why there's so much in abundance that you can have bison meat. You know, um, if we get rid of roads, bison can roam free again. <laughs> <laughs> you had your flying cars, the bison would come back. 
<laughs> and we can write bisons to work together. That'd be great. We had, yeah. you know, <laughs> Southeast Asian Indian subcontinent ideas about elephants. They would probably make a comeback. Hmm. And That'd be fun. I'd, I'd be down for that. Yeah. And bison races. What would you do about the deer? Would you be like, please hunt more of them? Yeah, people should be able to bow hunt from their subdivision windows and get simple protein. People were doing that in Nova, okay? These, these guys need a, yeah. My um, ex's wow. mentor had a bow and they lived not in Vienna, but like Front Royal or somewhere near there. And that guy would bun hunt from his window and then drain the deer in the bathroom and put it in the freezer in the garage. Oh my god. Yeah. This guy was renting my house. Oh my god. Oh, well, he wasn't. He owned his own house. His, his wife taught like the local school. And he would do this shit. Just, but I think like, I no, 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 oh, from upstairs. And, like, okay. They sell yeah. people. Uh, it was an apartment. They owned the yeah. house. Okay. Like these places you can stay at for like a week and you just hunt and drink for a week. Yeah, there's places you can take your kill, your deer kill, and they'll just butcher them and cut them with whatever pieces you want. Like, what do you want? And they'll just get the rest. Yeah, works perfectly. Can I get a Fibonacci spiral? <laughs> <laughs> you want a pine cone? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's the solution to a lot of this stuff, and there would be organizations, um, you know, to protect these kind of environments and find a way to kind of preserve them in a way that's in line towards, uh, again, respect for private property. Uh, a lack thereof there that doesn't exist here, yeah, leads to a lot of uh, turmoil and um, eradication of species of, of all kinds. Um, there's there's no one to take care of, there's no one to be responsible for that. So yeah, you can pass it off to the next generation, to the next, which is ours. It's like everything else that's kind of been a mess before that. Yeah, they just kick the can. Yeah, we're, we're now we're dealing with the effects of uh, let's start in the beginning of all that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the weather. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys think it's going to snow a lot more? More, more to come? Mm, yes. Yes? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but more fun adventure, snow adventure. Well, on that topic, uh, the solar weather guy actually says that we're in a period of uh, decreased solar activity, and a lot of people are predicting that we're going to see a mini sort of cooling period. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Just in the next couple months or like years. next year? So we need yeah, to build. So we'll see how this turns out. Either the Earth is going to warm, or it's going to get colder. So we should have. Well, it might be winter for a while. That works for me. I love the cold. I love winter. Uh, Summer is always running like a polar bear, and this humidity is running from AC condition building to the next. I'm gonna, oh my gosh! I'm just for Cancun. Like. We had a pretty mild summer. This yeah, actually, it was great. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. The weather at Anaconda was great too. It wasn't really humidity or anything like that. It was, it was perfect. It was good. Um, we'll see. Maybe we'll do it in October. Are you spelling your spelling? Uh, it's all over your shoe. You get, uh, something. Yeah, it was, it was just too close. I'll rub it into your shoe. <laughs> there we go. Another nice Indian. It's at the bottom of your shoe, dude. It is? Yeah. Oh. I won't throw myself over. It's a great, uh... I'll see. I want to shake your shoe. Alright, right, so here's a trivia question. Uh, <laughs> don't answer this question. Uh, so, what is the color of the sun outside of our atmosphere? What is the true, real color of the sun? It's not when, a color. When you look out from a space shuttle. There's, there's a lot of different colors. Depends, you, of our sun. Are you moving away? Are you moving towards it? No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. What is the color of the sun in, in space? <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I mean, it's some kind of yellow. The problem was it says yellow. You, you, you say black. <laughs> you say black. It's there to look at it. A telescope, like you say, it's a probe it's moving one way I or mean, another. You know, maybe you're see. looking at it in the infrared. I don't know. The, and the, the families of stars. It's not any color at all. It's like a human sense. The real color is actually white. Oh. Uh, you only see it in, in the space images. Does it mean see it's it? actually black because it's like reflecting? Uh. No, we, we see yellow through the atmosphere. However, in space, when they take pictures of it, when they're out there in the hubble scope and all that stuff, they paint it yellow through Photoshop because we're really familiar with the yellow sun. So we never get to see a white sun through all these space pictures. So it's just emitting all wavelengths. No, it's propaganda. <laughs> It's just all. Figure we're talking about a human color spectrum. We see some white ball. 
person who's yeah. trying to look at her. But would we have not. better maps in which we can detect the correct hue? So I was right. Yeah. You can use pictography <laughs> and just you just take pictures of certain wavelengths and then take another picture of another wavelength and mm -hmm. superimpose it together and be like, oh look, it's got all the colors. That's how they would have detected uh, some of these uh, super Earths out there, exoplanets, <laughs> uh, is by looking at some of the colors and see what well, it tends to match up with certain, uh, I guess, gas densities and stuff like that, whether it's yes. a gas giant like uh, Jupiter or it seems like it might have a good balance, that medium which water can freeze and to a solid and liquid in a uh, gaseous state. Mm -hmm. um, Turns out you shine get light through yes. a gas and then it gets absorbed and some of it doesn't. So apply that to other planets. All right. Science! Science! <laughs> I believe in science. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's... Uh, that's pretty cool. I guess we'll see how long this lasts and uh, whether or not we have another ice age. The funny thing I remember seeing about uh, a day, day after tomorrow was uh, everybody rushing back to try to get across the border into mm. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, okay. yeah, see, if we build the wall, then we won't be able to skate down there. Right, but by, by then... It's they, like Night of the Living Dead. In Mexico, they built, that all Trump's fault. in Mexico, they built the Great Wall <laughs> like in Game of Thrones to prevent the migration. <laughs> Uh, you, you we are all the right walkers. Oh, there's one down here. I remember, I think in there, I think uh, the president in there, the one that the assumed world because there was one died, he says, uh, all the dead will be forgetting in Mexico, and that allows us to cross over the border. It's like, well, what do we all dead? You don't, you don't have anything to do making such commands or, or trades with. Um, drugs. So, yeah. Drugs. <laughs> drugs. Yeah, drugs. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess uh, a Nina, we were talking about like, what, what could be causing some of this stuff also. Like, there was, it was really warm just last month in December. I don't know, like insects were flying around, uh, places were blooming, you were mentioning like in DC, you saw some trees. Uh, up in Philadelphia, I saw a cherry blossom tree in bloom uh, All right. in December. I was like, oh, what's up? Let's do this. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> did you try to give it a snickers first? Like, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're not acting yourself. It's still December. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, El Nino seems to be kind of causing a lot of that stuff as well. Um, so I guess we'll see. Uh, there is a winter apocalypse at Fall coming out soon. Nuclear, Nuclear, Nuclear winter. winter. Yeah, that's right. Nuclear. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so what are we, I guess, uh, going with in this winter season? When does uh, spring officially start here? Winter only just started in the 20th of last month, so it has been yeah. a month. It's a while. Yeah? So, yeah. Final winters arrived then, we could say, right? Solstices. I think it might be like March, March, April. March, April. 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 You got a while, huh? Uh, and April, uh, according April Courtney's going to do a garden talk of sustainability. Things are kind of get ready for people want to start planning and stuff like that. So that's going to be fun. Um, so I guess that comes, uh, VC is about to start. Uh, we're thinking about creating a club there. We're still open for yeah. some names. Tell us more about this club. Uh, so. Uh, you have an opportunity to create a student organization club there, and you can call it, you know, the Anarchist Club. I don't think I've ever heard of a university ever having uh, an Anarchist Club. <coughs> a lot of them try to go like uh, Students for Liberty, aka Americanism, Constitutionalism, uh, always just in terms of the political group. I've never heard of any that goes the, all the way in terms of, yeah, this is an Anarchist Club, not political, and in a way maybe to kind of combat the uh, communist influences that that's around here because of academic institutions like you know to authority right like, oh you're not real anarchist if you're not socialist or syndicalist like why is that an appeal to, to stuff that people have done before right i think that's an appeal to antiquity uh yeah so it could be present a good opportunity i was uh thinking about this you, you gave out the lifesavers for you know shopsticks uh at the sushi place last week yeah. that was a lot of fun uh so a good contending title could be Knights of Lysander Spooner. Uh, <laughs> is it kind of make it funny and fun? And uh, yeah, put some uh, real uh, pro respect for private property and self ownership uh, influence in the community that doesn't do any of that stuff, um, and kind of help uh, roll back some of that tide. Uh, and the same with like Marxism. Marxism wins because uh, by default, since if there's no one there to challenge and stand up to play and to bat against them. Um, or have the voices heard. So yeah, so ideas for that are open for any kind of names or any kind of fun things to kind of do with that. At the very least, it will provide us an opportunity to table indoors. Uh, you guys know Keegan, right? Everyone knows yeah. Keegan. I met him at the Silver Fair. That's how he, he heard of us. 
because uh, I was cabling there uh, with Tyler. And that's how he met us, and that's he's been a great part of uh, this community uh, because of that. So it might be some good opportunity to find uh, other people out there as well. Uh, so yeah, so that's the student organization. Uh, trying to find some maybe subversive name. Doesn't have to be the Kami Hunters Club, <laughs> which sounds like a cool name, I think. Uh, going Kami hunting, right? Or troll hunting. <laughs> Like that movie that came out uh, a little while ago in England. Kami sniping. Kami. <laughs> it's like, you have two workers. Which one is more equal than the other? <laughs> Good. Uh, so, yeah, so we'll see it. Um, in terms of that, um, are you, who's going back to VCU? You excited for that? I'm so excited. It's your last semester, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gotta go out the bang. <laughs> yeah, this is it. <laughs> it can't stop me now. Exactly. <laughs> Might as well. It's like uh, the opposite of senior writers. Just yeah. <laughs> trying to get away with as much shenanigans then as you exactly, can. Exactly, got to. All right. <laughs> and you too, how many semesters do you have left? Enough. Enough, yeah. And you might be transferring? Maybe. Maybe. Transferring. And um, you're already done, right? Well, you're going to go masters. So. You're going to go masters? Nice. Computer science still? Nice! <laughs> Alright, I didn't know that. That's great. Uh, this semester? Alright, great. Alright. Well, yeah, we need at least like five members to make this student thing official and then we can just do like, then we can resort like big rooms in there too if we ever wanted to do like a what is communism event and just kind of talk factually about this and that, and that community. Alright? Get the, get the titles and make all the communists want to come and then there's like... <laughs> An explore, oh, just like an expo an exploratory look at communism. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, and then like, oh, stupid PowerPoint projection is like and here's a picture of Che wearing his own Che shirt. And just talk about all the uh, the the race the race of hatred he exhibited towards uh, African Americans oh, and stuff. So. Swiss for the word race and ever all everyone be like, Oh my god. Right? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. meeting with a session with a five minute intro to Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we could do one of uh, Mark's the great exploiter. You know, big picture on there. They can't stop you. You have to do your presentation, right? Straight out of the uh, basement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and talk about how he exploited his friends, his family, his uh, local businesses, uh, and even the living maid that he knocked up and prevented the the offspring of the son from ever seeing the mother again. Always stuffed him off and always ignored him and just neglected him. Uh, you could talk about Mao, the great uh, mass murderer of communism. So there's a lot of fun stuff. A lot of people think communism, but they forget about all these atrocities that these people do, and you kind of have to bring to the forefront uh, these very people that advocate for that. There's uh, there's like a Maoist uh, Leninist group or something like that here in Richmond. It's like really, people, and yeah. the art school hasn't jumped on his cultural revolution, you know? Right, but he's he's a commie group of like one. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, been irrelevant. The website's never changed for years. So. <laughs> Is, someone, is that the cat there? That was the, the oh. bathroom door. Oh, no, no. Somebody else is going to have an archie. Some of the cats. Yeah. Really? Oh. The cat here's on. Oh, Frederick. Am I late? Am I late? <laughs> you are late. Mucking her tail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Isn't a commie group of one like a contradiction because you're forced to be an individual? There's no right. community there. He's There's no collective. Wait. No. He, that makes him an ad cat. Because he owes, since he owes the means of production, and there's only one person that owns the means of production. Ah! Ah! He's a little lonesome stuff. He's a secret. monopoly on his self rule. <laughs> <laughs> they must abolish them. You must break them. He must, he must break himself. <laughs> uh, it's irrelevant. I mean, uh, these groups were irrelevant. They're non-existent. Um, but yeah, the influence is still there. Uh, university and the textbooks. and well, There's uh, a lot of cultural marketing. Right, right, and that's and that's the thing you kind of have to kind of push back. Get go in that safe space in the comments. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're only allowed to have freedom of speech here in the circle, Cal. Outside of that, no freedom of speech. So, so that's to be fun. That's be a great thing uh, to kind of push forward to. Um, look forward to see <laughs> some of the very funny impacts uh, to to come from that. Uh, but aside from that, what other projects you guys seeing or come across? I think you were mentioning something uh, interesting that was cool about. Because I've been kind of agreeing with over the years in terms of circuses or zoos, right? Yeah. Um, never really thought about it myself like that until like a friend of mine in California, Monterey, was like she didn't really she never liked going to zoos because it looked like animals were like trapped, uh, looked like they're suffering in this, those kinds of cages. 
And then it was a it was a guy who had this little monkey doing like um, <coughs> like playful acts or something like that. And uh, <coughs> she kind of disapproved that sort of stuff. And that was a good kind of just considering that in itself. I don't know how much of a, the Shamu story in SeaWorld is substantiated or anything like that, but... It's, it is? I think so. It was in this tank that's like really small and they're... I can see it, yeah. You know, they're, yeah, they they usually will travel. travel hundreds of miles and they migrate. Like, and there was like stuff in this, I don't know, you know, I don't know exactly what they tank was, but... I do like, I remember like reading something about like, it, it would purposely be like running into the size of the tank, like, because it was like depressed and like, I don't know whether it was like purposely wanting to hurt itself or what, and I think that actually some have died. Um, and we can't entirely explain why. They have a lower lifespan uh, than they would in the wild. And they become, I think that it can uh, increase their aggression levels, is what I've heard. I don't, I don't know, I honestly haven't read about it. Well, the death lot. of a trainer who brought it to head was very much, you know, a conscious act of aggressive, you know, assault. Like, I, I don't want to be here. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> recently, a great white shark was trying to be, like, held in captive. And this has happened, like, a few times. They always end up kind of releasing it when it can't make it. But recently, one died after being held captive for only like, three days. Because its territory hmm. is huge and it's not used to eating, like, dead animals. Right. And so when the, you know, Dead fish just get popped in, and his tank doesn't want to eat. Right. died. I think I know the trainer you're talking about, the killer whale. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw the funniest meme of the killer whale outside the ocean saying, Are you not entertained? Mm -hmm. <laughs> After eating the trainer. <laughs> it is an entertainment. <laughs> I'm all, like, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you're sacrificing this person to me, you know, right. and, and that's how I'm supposed to feed, okay, fine, I'm going to eat this fat mammal with a blonde ponytail that you put out, because I'm doing what I do. All right, what do I do in the ocean? Like yeah, that? Uh, this, I'm a fucking, you know, killer whale, man, I'm going to... I'm going to do what I do. my pod and growl <laughs> in fatty, more slow-moving things, and I'm going to eat them. They'll there's eat no, anything. There's no negotiation here. <laughs> you know, like, that's it's, what I'm supposed to do. It's an apex right. predator, and you put it in a cage, and you think it's going to be okay with it. Well, you know what happens when you put people in cages. And I'm like, you know, I'm not saying that animals are on that same level intellectually, but how do we really know how they internalize that imprisonment? Right. I don't think we know. Right. And I don't, you know, I don't think we should necessarily be doing it. Until we can understand, or, I, I don't know, it's a very gray, like, moral area for me that... You know, I wonder like what can I do? And I'm like, well, I don't go to circuses anymore. I don't go to zoos. I don't go to aquariums. And I don't eat anymore. <laughs> I think the circus uh, is coming to town right now, right? In March. March. I hear that uh, the Ringling Brothers stopped doing elephant acts. Is that yeah, something new? Right. Recently, I think. No, they're still here. So last year they're gonna. Oh. Be oh, last year. Yeah, okay, that must be it then. Like I saw like a. It was gonna be like five years, and they shortened it to like three. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I saw a picture of like uh, Dumbo going to his mother, you know, her trunk is outside of the cage and he has great news and there's like a piece of paper next to him saying like they're going to stop, you know, doing this sort of circus acts with elephants. Um, but I don't know, I guess you, you have uh, animals that are, I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't know much of the effects, like you have a, uh, like in Borax, you had that bear in there, you know, it's playful and it's, you know, in terms of entertainment. Aren't you the one that told me about the camels? How camels have to be given an object to rage on? Right, so camels, like after you ride camels for a while, you gotta throw a rug at them. Uh, and, and because they have a lot of angst they need to take out. And so. Why they, do they have angst? I wonder. They <laughs> take out their <laughs> burden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They take out their angst on rugs and they stir the thing up, they stomp it in, and they just destroy the whole thing. Uh, and after they're done, it's like, all right, we're good. All right, well, they needed that, thanks. Holy crap, that's, yeah. that's a sign. <laughs> that's a sign. Right? They like people. <laughs> but, no, they don't necessarily don't like people. Uh, they've been kind of trying to domesticate it like that for, for thousands of years, like uh, like dogs, in terms of being loyal pets and the ways how like they're supposed to kind of respond to kind of a... Um, uh, human signals and devices are always in, and the way they're also bred to have like interesting baby kind of uh, looks, features, right? 
Uh, so you have more attachment to cute animals. Um, so yeah. Ugh, like pugs. Like pugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the animal hybrid. Animal has like the snout pushed in. Yeah. They they That's put the cats uh, hybrids between camels and mallards. Yeah. And they're no, supposed to be um, like they're actually bred less aggressive and, have and, and all those breeds have like that softer, like really but good respiratory problems like because of it. I'm curious how are you afraid that this is like oh god. And they're like also, a bit they're smaller than the other breeds. The facial features that the animals that the domesticated have, like they tend to have eyebrows, a little easier. Broad reaches. They're not as mean yeah. as a face. Right. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm talking about like actual specifically we breed them to look a certain way and it's not healthy for them. Oh, no, yeah, it's not healthy for them. We're doing like a story. Right. 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 You, you do this, there's, a, there's a lot of sheep that do that. The sheep back then used to be able to clear fences and bushes and brush and stuff like that. But over the time, they just bred it so they have short legs and they, yeah. they Sheep they used to be mountain animals and you can still find wild sheep right. and wild right. rams on mountain tops with the goats. The goats are also the same. They're like, Mountain animals. There's wild yeah. goats in Virginia. Yeah, I've seen wild ponies out there in uh. uh Dude, we that, take, what do we do uh, to the pig? No, Australia. Mount Rogers. What do we do to the pig to like have it the way we grow it now? Like wild boars. The pig lost the war. Don't you remember that? <laughs> the the Warhog War out in Japan when it was uh uh the battle with the forest spirit. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I know people not going to come say that. I'm talking about animals. Or Or pigs. I'm talking about their, their ancestral form before they turn into the little, uh, little babe. A boar is different than a pig. Well, they're the same, they're same family. They come from the same family. But the boars are like the same family as the same. Family. The, the, the pig came from wild boars, right? Warthogs and stuff like that? Before they were domesticated. I don't know. I honestly, I couldn't say yes or no. Seems like they did. I don't have that knowledge. <laughs> I do not possess it. But I know they're a different species. Well, I, I know they're different if now. If we sought to hunt it, we would also seek to domesticate it, just to save ourselves time. And that's what the, uh, an the successful animals work towards domestication, the ones that can reproduce faster. Um, the ones that take the longest are most difficult to domesticate. Um, so, um, cows, sheep, things like that, uh, chickens, you produce faster, easier to domesticate, things that take longer are much more difficult. I guess you could say human beings are a lot more difficult to, uh, to do that too in the long term, but after you do it several generations. You don't breed in captivity very <coughs> That's a problem in Japan. Uh, a lot of the economic controls and strife there in the situation there is uh, people realizing that it's too costly and so no one's... You know, as long as you're in a tax farm, you're breeding in captivity. Mm -hmm. But as long as you don't know you're in, it's, it's a farm. It's, it's just like when you ha when you control so much, you know, you don't produce healthy mi milk, for example, right? Unless you're a lot more free-ranging. I've heard um, the argument that modern dentistry is a symptom of human domestication because um, in more primitive indigenous cultures where they're getting like a wide um, range of wild foods and exercising all the time, uh, a healthy jawline is actually wide enough that your teeth should actually have a little bit of space between them. But in modern humans, our jawlines are shrinking. Mm -hmm. And bone density in general. Yeah. Hmm. So you wouldn't have to floss as much. Exactly. <laughs> You're eating more fibrous plants and less sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Have well, you heard that bones have actually structure? Um, have you heard that our teeth actually have the ability to heal themselves as well? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Heard, I've heard about. I've heard that, and I have heard like maybe it's like kind of the study is more like over in Europe, like it hasn't really. Well, there's holistic dentistry in the United yeah, States. You can, go to, yeah, you can go to some Richmond. I come across some articles every once in a while saying, like, you can grow back, I guess, maybe you're an animal or something. Yeah, basically, so our, our bone, our, our teeth is a reflection of our bone health, and we have cavities in them, and we and it's a little soft spot, you know, it's a rotting bone. We drill into it <laughs> um, until you only see the healthy teeth and then fill it in, right? Yeah. With them, whatever they, it is that they use. You can actually, if you're giving yourself the correct, proper nourishment, um, the, the rotten place will actually harden, and then you can use remineralization powder directly on the tooth, mm -hmm. um, and it, it can become a healthy tooth again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At first, some powder, which you can kind of regrow back uh, your finger when the tip is cut off. And mm -hmm. after somebody, and it was like cutting, and then boop, gone. And she just kind of kept it, put it in the freezer, went to the hospital, and there was this like uh, new interesting kind of powder in, uh, in Europe that it came out in, in terms of development, and so she just kind of applied it there. Um, 
and it just eventually just grew back. Grew back over the tip of her finger that she cut off. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Yeah, there's just a lot of interesting stuff, but here in the United States it's not available, uh, especially for like burn victims, and which can kind of grow back to skin because FDA and regulations go back a lot of these kinds of technology. I think it'd be interesting to meet a wild human. <laughs> <laughs> like how about like, what about cures for cancer with David Bowie and... Well, with everyone dying of cancer yeah. now. Yeah. And actually someone brought up an interesting, interesting point. Like, they never hear of like, um, was it cannabis oil? Like, does it really work? Hmm. Uh, it definitely works to some extent, but it's not like we can just look to this as, oh, we have cannabis oil, everybody keep eating your Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every Dorito company telling you that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm curious, like, how, none of these celebrities, how has, like, not one been like, I'm going to try cannabis oil, like... Mm -hmm. And the programming is strong. I mean, they live in California, maybe <laughs> they have. Well, no, it doesn't matter, if they have money, if they're like celebrities, they can get it anywhere. That's true. Yeah, no, they wanted it. I heard of, uh, I think, uh, Huxley, uh, the LSD guy, and his final days before he passed away, he uh, asked his wife to administer, uh, I don't know, 150 cc's, whatever it is, of LSD static <laughs> into oh, his yeah. last final hours. Oh, my God. Uh, which might have seemed really freaking amazing. Uh, in terms serious of that. shit. No, I mean, he, he lived in the headspace, you know. Okay. Yeah, he's been doing it for he's a long time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'll see you there. <laughs> I got you, honey. <laughs> Hopefully you got that kick of DMT upon death. Too. Right, yeah. so, oh, he, Jesus. so he lived like for like maybe a thousand years, and there are maybe considerations for maybe, maybe like a blink, or maybe like all that, all that data happening in his head like evolved into the next phase of energy. <laughs> <laughs> so is everyone doing okay after uh, what happened? Uh, everyone really from uh, David Bowie? Yeah, you okay? Yeah, you. You'll get through it, right? You don't really know the man. I'm <laughs> 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 sad that Voldemort died. Voldemort? Yeah. Uh, Snake. 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 Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm so sad. Did you Voldemort too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, right? Voldemort <laughs> 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 did. That's so great. He played both the bad guy and the protagonist and the antagonist. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, he was awesome in uh, Robin Hood, the sheriff. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know why. What? I don't know. Was, was that like the rapey Kevin Costner version? Because I've never seen that one all the way through. That was, yeah, Kevin Costner. I think he was very. He was the sheriff. He was the sheriff of Dying Hand. That's what he was trying to rape a uh, man. Yeah, I remember the facial hair, yeah. Yeah. Very oh my gosh. He wanted to rip people's hearts out with spoons. Right, right. Why is yeah. the one they were playing off of in Men in He had a henchman that was crying. He was deli saying, I, did, I couldn't kill him. It was he got away, and he was like, oh, he got away, oh, it's okay, come here, come here, and he threw his sword right through him. <laughs> Alan Rickman. Uh, Who's good at being the bad guy? Who's good at being the bad guy? Uh, memorable from Die Hard, right? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> the Turkey's guy. Huh? Wasn't he the Turkey's guy. It's like your guy, right? The and he was, yeah. and he was in Love, love Actually. Cheating My part, the, the favorite one, the best one, of course, Galaxy Quest. Oh, right? <laughs> By Raptor's hammer, by the sons of Raptor, I will avenge you. Oh. I will dearly miss you. <laughs> Show must go on. Show must go on. Show <laughs> must go out there. Show right. must go on. Like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've heard I'm some. Sad as, I'm sad that Bowie is gone because he, he just, you know, he, it was a life beautifully lived. He was always creating. Didn't he just put out an album too? Mm -hmm. Did you see what, the music videos? Birthday? Did you see the music videos? No, I didn't. You got to watch us. Hmm. I actually read an interesting article that was talking about like the occult influences and references throughout his entire work. It was interesting because I, I was not like super familiar. Yeah, he flirted with a lot of the stuff uh, in the very beginning. Uh, and he kind of really brought it to an end and with his last album too, perfectly like. I mean, if you read the article, hmm. it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. I'm just like, wow, like the foresight. You know, it's pretty amazing to take something so. You know, like his the end of his life and turn it into like 
artwork. I, I mean, I, I, I totally respect that, and I don't know if I can do that. It's hmm. So like a final awesome. brush piece to the painting? Hmm. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah, I heard, I heard that, and that tribute to that was to the fans, for everyone. It's for the whole story to finally kind of wrap it up. That makes a lot of references in that video to like past, you know, his past. Mm -hmm. And now. Yeah. I have to watch now. I haven't to uh, pull up much on that. Uh, that was a crazy video you showed us earlier uh, of him before the dip. No, not him. Uh, Eddie, Fred, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Because he did a song with uh, David Bowie, Under Pressure, huh. and then from there we got into some really old uh, Freddie Mercury videos in which he looks nothing like yeah, Freddie Mercury. Yeah, the decline, you know, that desiccated, you know. Was that at the end? I'm that was the beginning. Was yeah. that at the beginning or end? Or I don't know where that falls in the timeline. It kind of looks like Peter Mercury. Peter Mercury, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the song Under Pressure was interesting. Apparently he met David Bowie for, for 24 hours and they just kind of collaborated and they started from scratch to create the, that one song and they did it under uh, tables and <laughs> tables full of alcohol, liquor, and uh, mountains of cooking. And, uh, and they just went at it. And they created that song and that's where, where I gave birth. <laughs> the two of them. Um, but yeah, David Bowie. Uh, I think the first time I ever saw him was uh, The Labyrinth. Right? Most people with the cod piece. You know, just... It was the snowman. <laughs> the snowman? He does the, the intro to the animation of the snowman and he's like framed it like it's his childhood. <laughs> uh, I didn't until years later that, that was him, but that was the first place I saw him and the first place a couple of people who were coming up with me saw him too. Hmm. And then later Labyrinth, because you know, that crotch was developmentally important. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, young girl. <laughs> I was all about the low pet shirt, so. <laughs> He did play a vampire. It's a role of a movie that most people uh, don't know about. Hunter. He was also in Zucker. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He the judges walk the walk-off. The dent, yeah, the walk-off. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> Perhaps I can be the assistance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see if he uh, lived long enough to make a cameo on the next Z-Line. That's supposed to come out soon. Mm. Same thing said with Alan Rickman with uh, Galaxy Quest 2. I heard that was supposed to be in the works somehow, so let's see how that. I heard he'd make a great, uh, you know, Siri voice, you know, uh, make the U turn now. <laughs> <laughs> Too slow. <laughs> You'll never get there on time. <laughs> um, I've heard a funny thing, people want to create protective circles of all of our British people now, since Snape died. What <laughs> if all the aliens know that something bad's going to happen, they take them all away? Like, we need, we need Alan Rickman. We need to go, you up here now, because we don't want to. <laughs> so long, thanks for all the fish. So, yeah. so they're going to the uh, alien uh, planet Gulch. <laughs> they're, they're, they're abducting all the cult, all the culturally important people. Or rapture. Right. <laughs> 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 Who's next? Who's next? Castle's protective circle. Someone's saying the Queen is also uh, doing this Highlander series thing and trying to siphon off their energy to. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> But for the final battle, and that's how she lives long enough. That's why she knows people, so she's trying to. All right. Yeah, but he. Everybody said no. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That is it. Like, why she get him anyway? Why is he said that? Is that like Killer Clown from <laughs> Outer Space? <laughs> she okay, wears Star Trek Troopers, like thinking about the brain sucks it. All right. Are you guys uh, a fan of uh, David Bowie? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Big fan. Yeah. What's your favorite song? Uh, probably Moon Age Daydream. There you go. Yeah. Derek. Yeah. Yeah. I'm falling asleep. Falling asleep. It's been a long, a long adventure. I don't want to play What? All right. True story. True story, bro. But yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess this crazy uh, tangent off uh, like circuses and stuff like that in zoos. I guess you can't really look at preserves being the same thing, right? You know, they're still in cage and there's a fence around it, but it's more wild open area uh, instead of kind of put together in a small little cell room. In terms of animals, um, so yeah, there's a weird area there, some kind of weird balance you kind of have to kind of create, I imagine. 
um, the large pen area of uh, private reserves brought back the bisons and uh, zoos don't really kind of provide that kind of area of um, environment that they would need. I actually heard, I learned recently that um, the Siberian tiger is totally inbred. Like, it's not actually a separate species. Hmm. It's just like something that randomly happens and if both parents have that recessive trait and it gets passed on, the tiger's white. Hmm. Mm. It's like, uh, and I was I like, what? This whole time I thought, you know, they were actually like a separate species or something because they call it a Siberian tiger. Yeah, I've totally seen like but shade it's not. this, you know. Yeah, it's, well, it's a species, 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 species. And the only way you can keep them is to like, you know, inbreed them, and that's what people do. And then like, there was something about like, this one tiger that was in captivity was like, really a dumb, I said, what do I say? Mentally. Ligers? No, no, Siberian so, 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 the ones that are like super white. Yeah. And red words, you know, they were talking Yeah, it was actually so like stupid and too. dumb. Like, I mean, it's like skull structure was even weird. And, yeah, it passed away recently. I heard ligers happens to them as well. But they, they, don't, were, they, they don't reproduce well after. Right. Like, they can't. And ligers babies. are like mules, you know. They're, 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 they're Right, yeah, the mules are kind of like the same thing, uh, really shaped and stuff like that. Or that zebra horse. Just many of horse? I don't know. Steve. Or any of you. Bojack. Is anyone familiar with the pipeline that Dominion is trying to build? Oh, that's happening. Pipeline? Explain. Yes. So okay. they're trying to build a natural gas pipeline through at least this state. I don't and know where, where uh, it's from. Um, and they've proposed a few different routes, but uh, in order to build this pipeline, they're you know going to have to basically interfere with a, a lot of um, you know individual people's land and mm -hmm. with the uh, are they going to go through the that? ecological systems that are in place that you know some of which are almost. You know, in their original states. So are they going to build like Appalachian Trail or something? Or? Uh, I know no, that part of it uh, would be going through like the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, there's a lot of you know small towns and stuff that will be heavily affected by it, um, mm -hmm. and you know especially like the effect it will have on water, and you know out there a lot of people are surviving off of you know well water and stuff and. Uh, it can have a lot of problems for them as far as like, the water table. Is this the same and thing they were trying to send through Jamestown at one point? Do you happen to know? Uh, because this has kind of been an ambitious power for a while. Well, yeah, it's more sure. west now, but it's the same thing they were proposing. Is that, you know, that Dominion is going for um, eminent domain and stuff, and they're claiming that, you know, it's for America or whatever. Um, but the end point where it goes to is a facility that exclusively exports natural gas. And the pin Dominion is saying that they're not selling it. But Dominion is selling it to this other company who will be exporting. Hmm. So they're so selling them the pipe. They're selling them the gas out of the pipe and the pipe goes directly to them, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's yeah. kind of an absurd, like why you know um hmm. but you know there's all these a lot of people and animals that you know, will be affected by this pipe if they actually you know build it mm -hmm. um because like well for one you know what would make sense is to try and build it alongside existing utility lines but instead they want to build it through you know the middle of the woods the same right and you know it requires basically creating you know 50 feet of space around it and if not more and then you know it produces uh noises which aren't you know generally gonna exist there and the pipes are larger than they've ever built one before right they're like four or five feet around and they have no idea what would happen if one of those exploded hmm. you know the damage that could happen um, so it's, yeah, so it's pretty messed up. Hmm. I've been hearing some of this stuff, uh, lately and stuff like that. 
And some people trying to... It's been going on for years. I'm yeah. The debate. It reminds me of this article I saw a while ago. Um, the guy was basically saying the woods are falling silent. Um, he used to travel the world with uh, microphones just making um, CDs of nature sounds. And he's been doing this since the 70s, I think. And he says through the years, the woods are growing quieter and quieter. Hmm. And he's having difficulty picking up nature sounds. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's a lot of human encroachment. Right. Wow, that, that sounds maddening. Right? Um, the world grows silent. Right? Besides, even even silent nature is growing silent. Huh. Uh, I think we reach our hour point there. Uh, I think that'd be a good uh, topic to bring up with the uh, the Keystone thing of Bernice Monogram. Uh, I think Johnny knows uh, has a lot of good times with Dominion Power and such like that in their effects. Um, but yeah, I, I guess the the circus is coming to town and stuff like that. And much. pretty much, uh, yeah, I haven't really been much of a fan of that stuff either. I like cotton candy. That's about it. Right. <laughs> You can get a bit of a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> Until the sentience of sugar cane has been proven yeah, yeah, to be yeah. the point that it suffers, you're fine. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, thanks to you guys for, for coming by. That was a great adventure we had today. Yes, uh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but we will do like well, get maybe adventures before couch, you know, help uh, draw a lot of this stuff in and uh, keep doing a lot more interesting, you know, acts of uh, brewery <laughs> out there. Um, we're going to need that as a tribe to kind of combat statism. So, yeah, thanks you guys for, for coming by. Thank you guys for watching. This has been your episode of Count. Uh, Bye, ladies. See you guys at the Brick Tea Party. Take good care. Yeah.